Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Terry McCann, I'm from Adatus, I'm an analytics consultant. And today what I'd like to do is take you through a, a brief overview of SQL Graft, which is now available in SQL Server 2017 CTP 2.0. The SQL Graph functionality was introduced um, at the Data Amp conference and has an associated blog with this talk, which essentially will take you through the basics of what a graph database is and what it's used for. There's a lot of great content already available from Microsoft about what a graph is and, and how it actually works within SQL Server 2017. However, what I'd like to do is actually look at how you can start using SQL Graph with some of your own data. So to start this off, what I've done is I've gone away and tried to find some data which has a series of hierarchies in it. So a good one to actually start with is a movie database. So um, Kaggle have available 5,000 movies um, which have been shredded from IMDB. Now this data contains, um, so it's 5,000 movies. And what you can see here is, um, is essentially that data. I've downloaded it. Um, and it has what the movie title is, who the director is, um, who the main actors are, what the genre is. Um, and with this, what I'd like to do is import this data and shape it into um, a graph and then have a start having a look and analyzing um, this data, but using um, T-SQL Graph. So I'm gonna hop over to um, a VM I have running, which has got um, SQL Server CTP2 um, two for 2017 installed. I've created a database called Movies, um, and essentially what I'm going to do is um, just set that up and add a new table which I will insert that data into. So I'm just creating that table. So at the moment it has no data in. I've just got a basic SSIS package, which is just going to read that data in and load that table. So now that that's loaded, we can have a quick look at the table, and we can see we've got our director names. We have also got our movie titles over here, so you can see um, we've imported Avatar, Pirates of the Caribbean, um, James Bond Spectre. Um, as well as the associated actors. So what this data set has is who was the main actor, who was the second main actor, and the third main actor. So it doesn't have everybody who's in it, but it does give you the top three. So what we need to do now is we can't, uh, we can't essentially just start analyzing this data as it is in this single table. We need to transform it and reshape it into two new structures which have been introduced for, um, for the graph analysis. The first one is a node, and the second one is an edge. You can think of a node as being an object. So an object may be a person, it may be a store, um, or in our example, a, it, the object may be a movie, it may be a director, an actor, a genre. Um, it's something that we are essentially trying to jump from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of nodes going to create a node for genre, movie, actor, and director. I'm not going to populate these tables, if anything, at the moment. Now what I'm also going to need to create is a couple of edges. Now these edges are our relationships between our items. So in the example in the blog, what I do is I refer to um, a brief social network um, example. So social network is a common example you get with graph databases. So what you have in front of me here is a very basic example of a social network. So the central node um, is a person called Simon, and Simon knows two additional people, Emma and Sasha. And what we want to do is we want to recommend them new people that they should also connect with. So we could make a sort of assumption that we might want to, that they may know people that someone else they know knows. So Simon knows Emma, but he may also know East and Matt. So we may want to recommend those particular people. And this is sort of how um, services like LinkedIn work, how they will familiarize you and recommend you new people. Um, and you can keep scrolling, keep scrolling to find new connections, and it will essentially just keep traversing different layers of a graph. 
and that's essentially how that's working. So what we have here is um, every one of these circles um, is a is a node essentially. So we have a person node of Simon, a person node of Emma, and a person node of Matt. And the lines that connect them are relationships, or um, as they are manifested in a graph, as edges. And that edge is that Simon knows Emma, Emma knows Terry, Terry knows Dan, etc. So you can traverse between these two nodes using these edges. So back into our movie um, example, an edge in here would be um, an actor has acted in a movie. So I'm going to create an acted in edge. A movie is directed by a director, so I'm going to create a directed by edge. And I'm going to do the same thing for somebody who stars in a movie. So a movie starred an actor. Essentially, this is a flip of the acted in. Now, our data at the moment is just one big flat table, and we need to actually transform that a bit so it can fit into our data. So what I'm going to do is just create a series of views, which I'm then going to use to populate those tables. Um, as my data doesn't have any IDs now at the moment, I'm going to generate IDs where I need to, um, essentially by using a row number. So create the first one, a view of movie, and I'm going to populate that into our movie node. And what that's done, if we do a select star from um, the movie node, is you can see the data has been inserted into these far two columns. So we have our movie ID and our movie. But what's also been created is this additional column here called node ID. And essentially this is a key value pair, um, a summary of the data that we have in our um, over in these additional columns. So it's um, of a type node as a schema of DBO. Um, it has a table of movie. Let's expand this a little bit. And it has an ID of um, zero. So now you can pass this to a relationship or an edge and it will know which particular row you are talking to. I'm going to do the same for genre, so this time just doing um, something a bit different, actually using a relatively new feature in SQL Server which is string split to split um, a string which is pipe delimited down into its individual rows. So we do that for genre. Do the same for directors. And do the same finally for actors. So what I've got now is a couple of populated um, nodes and a couple of populated edges. So what I can start doing is, um, sorry, I've got a couple of populated nodes. What I need to do is populate the edges. So a node, each of our nodes contains a node ID. And in order to populate our edges, what we need to do is we need to pass in the node ID from one node to a different node. So essentially I want to pass in, um, for the concept of an acted in, an actor acts in a movie. So my two nodes that I want to connect are actor and movie. And I can do this by inserting into my acted in edge, passing in the node of the actor and the node of the movie. So going from my actor to my movie. All of these scripts um, are available in the blog. If you want to download them, um, you can do. That's available on Adatus' website, www.adatus.co.uk. So I'm just inserting those. I've inserted 5,000 relationships into this table. So let's have a look at what's actually been inserted. So what you can see is we have an edge ID, which is the ID for that particular edge. And we've inserted the node from um, our actor table and the node from our movie table. So now there's a relationship that's been created between those two items. So we can do the same for our starred in edge. And that's enough for the moment to start working with our data. 
So we're going to have a look at that data and we're going to try and um, come up with a couple of different queries. So the first one, um, not because I'm a massive fan of 50 Cent, um, it's purely because 50 Cent is the first actor to appear in that list. I'm not judging 50 Cent. Um, I want to create um, a query looking for any movie which starred the actor 50 Cent. So if I was to do this in T-SQL, what I would do is something just as simple as this. So select the movie title from my raw movies where either the, act, the first actor, second actor or third actor was 50 Cent. So if I run this, it returns me five movies that he was in, um, of which I have actually seen one, um, Southpaw. So that's how I do it in T-SQL. Now if I wanted to do this in, um, in the new T-SQL graph syntax, it would look slightly different, it would look like this. So what's happening here is I'm saying, um, select me the movie from, and I'm giving a comma separated list of the nodes, um, the edges, and another node. And then what I have is this new bit of syntax down here, where match. And what match does is it accepts a pattern of node relationship node. And that's the basic pattern. It can accept more advanced patterns. It can go node relationship, sorry, node edge, node edge, node, and that sort of thing to start going deeper and deeper. So what I'm saying here is give me the movie where we're matching an actor who's acted in that movie. So um, return me any of the movies that 50 Cent has acted in and we're just getting 50 Cent based on that I'm doing a where clause of where the actor is um, 50 Cent. So if we run that, we get the same results back. Now there's no real benefit between running these two queries. These two queries are essentially the same. It's arguably easier based on just that single table to do this in T-SQL. Now, T-SQL and relational databases in general are brilliant at doing particular jobs. Things they're not very good at doing is traversing hierarchies. So one of the key things that social graphs were um, developed for is to say, give me so many distances away from a particular thing. So I could um, essentially parachute into a graph, pick a particular person and say, um, give me all of the people who are connected n times away from that person. And that's a great sort of query that a graph does. Unfortunately, um, SQL graph is you know very much in its early days and that sort of functionality hasn't actually been um, baked into this version that's being released. We can only do some really basic things. So in queries, the other queries I'm going to show you are somewhat basic um, and you know SQL graph in SQL Server is nowhere near the functionality that you get from um, other graph databases such as Neo4j or Cassandra's Titan. So another query that we may want to do is say, okay, well, um, give me the actors um, in films which have starred 50 Cent. So the those five films that 50 Cent was in, give me the actors who were also in those films. So to do this in T-SQL, we could do this, um, again, quite simply by just using um, a, a CTE. Um, and I have down here the actors who are also in films um, that starred 50 Cent, but I've excluded 50 Cent so he doesn't show as well. So there were 10 other actors. And we can do the same thing in um, our graph syntax. This time we are aliasing um, our actors and we're essentially adding in additional ones. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, give me all the actors, and this is from the second actor. Um, from actor, actor again, starred, acted in, and movie. And this time our match is a bit more complicated. So what I'm saying is, take my actor one, which is 50 cent, give me all the movies he acted in, and then um, give me of those movies who starred in those, and give me the set, give me the other actor, um, where that actor is not equal to 50 cent. So we had 10 actors returned in our T SQL version. We run our graph, we've got 10 um, actors returned again. So same sort of query, but now our syntax is becoming a lot simpler, um, a lot simpler to run. 
and then we can get slightly more complicated where we say okay of those actors give me the films that they acted in so give me all the films that Sylvester Stallone was in all the films that Robert De Niro was in Jay Gyllenhaal etc and we can do that here so if I zoom in what we have now is we have two actors a starred in two acted in and two movies and we're saying um, for actor one give me all the movies they've acted in which starred actor two who acted in a movie which is a little bit you know a little bit quite a lot to get your head around but it's essentially saying um, give me all the movies that 50 cent acted in then give me all of the um, actors he acted with then give me all of the movies that they acted in and that produces a list of 166 um, movies so that's a bit of a basic example of getting started with um, SQL Graft. There is a really good blog that I recommend reading from the SQL Server team, which um, was published today and goes through um, a lot of where SQL Graft is in its development and also covers a lot of the caveats. So you can only do very basic things with this at the moment. Um, a couple of the, the, the key things that are missing are the detailed functionality that you get with Neo. So, um, a good example here is how do I find a node connected to me, arbitrary number of hops away in my graph. Um, and what this is known as is um, transitive closure. Um, and essentially is this is what I was saying about if you parachute into a graph, I want to get everybody who is so many hops away from me. Unfortunately, you can't do that sort of thing at the moment in SQL Graph, um, which is a a bit of it's not a failing because it's gonna it's probably going to come, but um, at the moment a lot of the functionality that you can do in Graph you can probably do almost as well in T SQL. So the other element um, that is currently um, missing is polymorphism, so that is to find any node connected to me in a graph. Um, and again, hopefully that will be coming um, soon enough. And the other thing that's sort of missing is um, Neo4j gives you a fantastic graphical interface into um, your graph. So you can drop in and you can see all of the nodes that are related to it. And you can move them around uses D3. It's very interactive. Unfortunately, there isn't anything like that at the moment either. So that was a very quick introduction to um, SQL Graft. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know at SQL Shark on Twitter or leave a comment on the blog. Um, so thank you very much for, um, for listening and so let me know if you have any comments. Hopefully SQL Graft will improve and I'll do a couple more blogs as and when it does um, and we'll see what we can do. All right.